Hey there, in this video, I'm going to be reviewing the updates to GoCollect, the updates that occurred uh, mid-October 2021 on GoCollect.com. I'm going to go through those and give you my review of the site. Is it better? Is it worse? Is it about the same? Let's find out. All right, so if you are familiar with GoCollect and you've been a user, you'll uh, know that uh, around October 13th, 14th, uh, depending on who you ask and depending on whether the site was available or not, you'll notice that uh, it experienced an entire UI refresh. Uh, I wouldn't say it's a complete overhaul, but uh, it's a pretty drastic change from uh, what it was before. Uh, a lot of the elements in terms of data have been shifted around on the platform. And I'll kind of give you my reaction to a lot of the changes that GoCollect made. And in my experience as a developer, somebody who's built web applications, just kind of talk about some of the little nuances and changes that I have found to be a little frustrating um, and see if, uh, you know, maybe you agree or disagree with me or, um, you know, just looking at their changes and seeing if uh, the way that they're presenting data is uh, more beneficial to you. Um, but wanted to give you kind of that insider look of somebody who has an account and what the interface looks like after you've subscribed and you've signed in. So let's take a look. Okay, so this is the new landing page. This is what they're calling the dashboard. Uh, this is your homepage for your collection. So I'm signed in as Moneyball Comics. The first thing you'll notice here in the top right, it has this notification bell. And what they're doing is they're putting all of their recent sales for comics that you are watching into this notification area. And then if there's a hit based on comics sold or maybe a new record in terms of fair market value, they're putting those items in here. And so these are items that I either own or I'm interested in owning at a particular grade. Um, so we could see here that today at 2.23 p.m. we had a comic sold tracker hit. And I can go ahead and click on that and it will take me to that comic page so I can see it in more detail. But essentially all of these notifications are here. Now, I don't mind this. This was very similar to where it was before. So you can clear an individual item and then kind of come back and do some work and come back here and, and see if there was another hit or move on to the next one to take a look at. Here's Young Avengers selling for uh, almost $1,200 today. Um, a lot of what they're doing too is they're putting where the comics sold for. So these are being pulled directly from eBay or Heritage Auctions. Uh, so again, you can clear these one at a time. And if you're tracking a lot of books like I am, as you can see in this list, and you don't want to see them anymore for some reason, you can also just say clear all. It says you're all caught up. Now, I don't mind that so much. That's okay. I think that that's what uh, I was doing before in terms of the dashboard. And I feel like that's a little bit of a more familiar way to get notifications. So I think that that's fine. And uh, you're able to subscribe to these notifications. Uh, the only thing I'll say is here, they're redundant here on the dashboard as well. So if I refresh, I don't know if those go away or not. And, and they do. So they're tied together. Um, so a little bit of a duplication here. But again, I, I don't think that's terrible. Uh, honestly, I'm sure they're looking for things to add to the dashboard. Um, but this is one thing that I don't like. My dashboard uh, now covers the other areas in GoCollect, which, you know, again, if I had concert posters and video games, then I certainly would be interested in those as well and seeing them all in a consolidated way. But uh, I don't have a way to make just a comic book dashboard. So I'm going to see concert posters I'm gonna see news and reviews. I, I can't come in here and change any of this. I see their blog posts uh, and that's fine and good, but I can't make this just about comics. So I'm seeing video game information uh, and current comic auctions is now a thing where they're showing all eBay auctions and then the upcoming comic book heritage auctions, which that's helpful for me. I'm interested in the, the next Sunday and Money comic book uh, select auction. So there it is as a quick link. So I get it, it's a dashboard, but I wanted to see more of a customizable comic book dashboard. Maybe with me developing some of my own reports and queries, like show me how many books I have in GoCollect. Why not just put a little nice summary there? Like there's some things that are missing here. Um, and it's saying swap dashboard to um, and if I switch it to concert posters, it just makes the notifications or the blog post relevant, but it still is basically the same. 
Um, so there's no specific comic book dashboard per se that has comic book only information. Now, the big use of GoCollect for me is the ability to enter books into their database and create lists of books and curate them around these lists. So if I go into my lists and trackers here, we'll see that after a couple of seconds to load, uh, we'll see a new interface for my list. So again, what you're seeing is almost the, the intent or theme or purpose behind this redesign of GoCollect. To me, what this says is we want to be, uh, you know, the collecting resource for other genres, other collectibles, uh, and concert posters and video games are obviously on here, right here. Uh, and I think that they're going to want to do sports cards and some other things relatively soon. And they're trying to create kind of a generic site for all things collectibles. I don't mind that. That's fine. Again, if I was into other collectibles, um, like our Funko Pop's going to be on here someday, like, okay, maybe that makes sense. But I want to uh, have a particular resource like GoCollect be focused on the specific collectible and at least hide the other collectible types from my, my point of view or the dashboard that I'm looking at. So even with concert posters being here, I, I don't want it there. I don't want to see it. Um, I want to see just comics. So I wish there was a way to say, like, these are the collectibles that I'm interested in and only these and only show me these. Um, there's definitely some lag with the new system in terms of pulling up lists and things like that. And I know I have a lot of books in here, but that shouldn't matter. They should have figured out a way to do that. And there is a way that they've, uh, I would say, organized the interface differently. Uh, you'll see here in a moment what I'm talking about in terms of showing your full collection, but in a minimized view. Um, let's look at one of these lists. Maybe this is a better example. So if you watched one of my previous videos, my bad, my personal collection being that many entries is not something that GoCollect recommends. So let's pick something that has um, something over a hundred items. And let's just go with this one. So this is uh, my Marvel list going from the America Chavez series through Black Panther. So it has 111 books inside. So when you click on this list, the first thing you'll notice is the images are broken. So I get it, it's a new rollout, there's gonna be some bugs, that's fine. It, it doesn't bother me so much, but again, a little tacky that these are broken. Um, it does show the price paid. Uh, I used to track that in a lot of detail. Um, I don't really use that information anymore to, to show. I just figure, you know what, at the time I bought the book, it was cover price wherever I bought it. And honestly, the books that weren't that I paid more for, I, I really just look up that information when I go to sell the book or try to look at a price just to make sure that I'm uh, recouping my costs. But uh, in any case, you will see the price you paid. Um, you'll see whether or not you're tracking the book. Uh, and that's kind of it in the list. Um, there's really not much else to it, so it's just showing every book I have in the list. And then you'll see down here, it has these uh, page numbers. So showing one to 20 of 111, re 111 results. There's no option to say, show me all. So if I'm coming in here and I'm saying Control F Black Panther to find a particular book in this list, it's not picking up any hits. So I have to scroll through now every single page, two through six, and control F Black Panther to find it. Now you could say, well, why don't you just search for the book and I'll show you that here in a second. But I wanna point out the fact that this is uh, something that is not gonna work for me. Like only showing uh, 20 books at a time when I have lists of 100, 200, 300 books, um, not a great user experience. The value report is something else that I use heavily. Um, so I will click on that and show you what that looks like. Again, it's taking in price paid, um, but it's missing a lot of values. So whatever they did in terms of data, and I don't know if they just did a data refresh or, or they were working on a separate database, but this I know for a fact that the total value of this list is not $218. Um, it has lost a lot of that historical information um, around a lot of these books where these books don't have uh, value anymore. Um, so I'm also zoomed in at 150%. You can see my scroll bar doesn't appear until the very bottom. 
So then I have to scroll this way to figure out what is that fair market value, which is what this column is, and then scroll back up. So now I can see fair market value, but then I can't get back to the left. I can't see what book we're talking about. So again, I'm really disappointed in this user experience here. Um, the, the whole purpose of me using GoCollect is to get books into the system and then where I can see what is the fair market value of the grade that I assign to a book when it's professionally graded. What is that value? So if I have a book that I bought for five bucks and I've slapped a 9.8 on the back of my board and said, I think this is a 9.8 all day, I want to go in to go collect and see what is a 9.8 selling for. And if it's selling for 100 200 300 or selling for $20, then that will help me make the decision as far as whether or not I'm going to send it to CGC. That's the whole point of me using GoCollect. And now this is lost. I can't really do this anymore uh, because this interface, it, I can't sort the columns, so I cl can't click any of these here. You'll see it's just highlighting. I, I can't click. I want to be able to sort fair market value, greatest to least, and so forth. Um, there's other stuff, personal estimate, target price. Those are useless because the market changes so much. Like, why aren't these calculated by GoCollect? Isn't the whole point of having a database like this to actually come up with these values uh, based on the market and actually calculate them and provide some estimation or some suggestions? I think that isn't that the point. Um, I Do I need this wide signature here? Like, wow, okay, signed by John Cassidy, great. But is that important on a value report? If I know it's a uh, CGC, um, again, it's universal, but it could be signed or what have you. I'm just not exactly sure what the thought process was behind uh, selecting the columns. And in most cases, when I'm developing an interface and I have a data table like this, the first thing that pops into my head is make it so that the user can rearrange the columns or specify to hide or show columns. So there should be a way to go in here and say, I don't on the, on my value report, all because I'm using CGC as my baseline, sorry, CBCS, but it's just the, the way that I've started my collection and it's what I'm doing. But what I would want to see on a value report is I want to see the book title, obviously with a link back to the book. I want to see the grade I assigned the book and I want to see the fair market value. That's it, that's my value report. I don't need to see all of these other things like personal estimate. Uh, personal estimate is irrelevant. All my books are awesome. Great, that's my estimate. Um, okay, so let me take you back just for a second here because there is something that I find uh, to be useful to some degree, and this is this download button. So I don't believe that the previous iteration of GoCollect uh, allowed you to export this data. Uh, but when I say this data, it is only the data that you've put into the system. And I have argued that with them in the past through some uh, contact uh, support messages. And you'll see, look, I've already got another notification I can click on there too. So it is more functional in real time. And I like that it does feel fresh and updated. But when you're downloading data, it's just your data. So you cannot download a value report. You cannot download it because I think that they're afraid that the values and, and the way that they assign a value, it's proprietary to them and their systems. And I get that. So if they could just constantly download lists, why couldn't you take that list and build your own database off of that? So I understand that they don't want to necessarily just allow you to download it. And the download, as you can see, is just a representation of the data that you've put in and nothing more. Now, I want to go to a specific book. Now, I'm going to pick one from the list that um, probably has some, I would say, historical data. So let's look at Avengers 257, which again is, um, it has a broken image. But if I say view comic, I'm taken to the actual unique URL for this book, and this is Avengers 257. This is the first appearance of Nebula. And we can see that they're marking it and classifying it as a key issue. Uh, that is up to them. Uh, I would say that, yeah, it's a key issue. First appearance of Nebula is right here in the center. And we've got lots of great detail about the book, which I like. Um, you can add to uh, a list. You can add this book to an existing list right from here, which is also great. Um, you can see there's a CBCS census coming soon, uh, but the CGC census is operational. Uh, some details around the census. And then down here, we've got the sales 
for this book. And uh, the sales detail is great. It's, uh, it has additional information now. Uh, very similar to GPA, which I find to be interesting, but also I'm glad it's here. Um, but this is what GoCollect is saying is the 90-day average for this book, and then the one-year average. 30-day um, average uh, is something that uh, GPA does not have, so this is uh, really interesting to see these trends. And then they assign, based on their algorithm, what that fair market value is for the book. So in this case, a 9.8, $220.00. So I don't really see the fair market value showing up anywhere really that's interesting. Uh, you will see it on your list value report uh, under the specific grade that you've given the book. So you'd have to specify um, the grade CGC Universal, right? So that's one of the reasons why I select every book as CGC Universal is because that's the only way to see the fair market value. Um, according to GoCollect, it doesn't have a value unless you've specified that. And that's another reason why I use cover price so heavily is because I can actually see the raw value versus the uh, slabbed value. And the slab value they had just added this year. And so them adding that is now making me rethink what I've done with GoCollect. But that's where that value report being I would say disappointing now or, or almost unusable um, is now making me rethink how I would find potentially uh, slabbed books and slab values uh, for raw books that I would want to grade. Um, so let's go back here just for a second in this, what I would call the, the comic profile page. This is a book that I own. How do I know that? This is all value information, known variants, more from the series. Uh, you can find uh, things. I don't know what premium auctions and stores are. Um, I, I don't know what that is in terms of an integration. Maybe they're partnering with some things, but it looks like it's just Heritage and eBay, and it's not even really completely accurate. But at least the available now on eBay is. Um, there's no way for me to tell that I have this book. Uh, this is one of the biggest flaws in the new version. Uh, there's so much uh, value in searching for a book. Maybe you don't remember if you own it or not. I have done that before. Or I know I own it, but I don't know how many copies. There used to be an interface, uh, some, some card or module here within the page that said, here's the book. Here are the grades you gave it. Here's how many you have. Um here's your purchase price or whatever other data you've put in, uh, it's gone. Uh, so it doesn't mean that the data is gone, the data is still there, but the only way for me to tell that I have this is if I dig into the list and that should just be one way. Um, the real way that I found that I, I'm constantly searching on GoCollect is I'm coming in here and I am searching for a book like uh, Stray Dogs number one and I hit enter and I don't think it's searching so I'd have to hit enter again. And here's the book. Again, I what I love about cover price is there's some sort of indicator right here that says, hey, you have this book already. In fact, you've got two or three or five. So if I click into this Stray Dogs number one, it's again, it's not, it's not telling me that it's on one of my lists. It's not telling me anything. At least it could tell me, uh, hey, this is on the list if you want to click into it, but it's an extra click. So this to me is just... I have to really think about, is this a deal breaker for me to even use the system? I'm just hoping that this is, you know, sort of maybe an early release. It's a, it's growing pains. Maybe they want some feedback. Maybe they can watch this video and kind of see some of the, the user experience issues that I'm having. But, uh, and then lastly, just in terms of the layout, um, there's so much wasted real estate, all of this up here in the top. Watching, want, and like. Do I really need that in a giant bar in the middle? I feel like they were trying to build this for the iPhone. And again, the desktop version maybe got ignored. I don't know. But uh, there's so much wasted space where these watching, want, like, or something. Put that in a menu. Stuff it off to the side. Um, put some of maybe this author, artist, publisher. Put it up here in, in, in kind of a nice block or table. And then get my data in here. <laughs> That's the whole point. I put all this information in here. I'm cataloging it. I'm, I'm grading it. I want to see it right here, front and center. These are the books I have. And again, you can see, uh, you can search the sales, like recent sales. 
um, and filter. And all of that's great. I love all of that pricing information. But to me, this is really now just a lookup tool. It's really more like GPA, which again, maybe that's their, their thought behind it. It really is to, um, to look at what GPA is doing and copy a lot of what they're doing and include it in Go Collect. But even the word Go Collect to me feels like you're collecting, you're, you're managing your collection, you're putting your data in here, and we wanna represent your data and show your, your data and visualize your data in a very specific way to help you understand what you have in your collection. And that's lost now. Um, I really feel like I have to look at cover price and, and look at what I'm doing with Go Collect because it takes time. You've seen my screening videos where I go through and I'm jumping back and forth between Go Collect and cover price. It takes a lot of time to go in and do that sort of data entry. So um, yeah, that's basically the functionality that I wanna to cover today with Go Collect. Go Collect, if you're watching, please uh, consider some changes to get uh, more representation of the data that's in my collection uh, out up in, in front and center on these screens. Um, really, I would love to see some sortable columns or the ability to rearrange columns of data. Um, I love the analysis that you're doing in terms of showing the CGC census, looking at recent sales, putting that all into those trends and averages. I love all of that but I need to know if I have the book. Um, if it's just a straight lookup tool, uh, I can get a lot of that from GPA already. Um, so you're kind of duplicating efforts and I need you to stand apart from cover price. And one of the biggest values for me is your ability to create a tabular interface where I can see my collection and see my raw collection, more importantly, and see that those raw books have some additional potential value if I were to get them graded. That is the number one reason I use the site because you guys have that data. I'll gladly pay for that analysis and it's now buried. And uh, if I can't get access to that, then I'm gonna have to really reconsider how I use it and really just kind of use it as a lookup tool for what it is and not really uh, put a lot of my collection in here and, and spend the time doing the data entry. So let me know in the comments, what do you think about the new Go Collect? Uh, have you seen some of these changes? Do you like them? Do you disagree with me? I'd love to hear your feedback on it. Um, I've been a big fan of Go Collect. I like what they're doing in terms of the interface, so I'm just disappointed. And uh, I want to give them a chance to improve and add some additional functionality. And hopefully this new platform will be able to do that. They'll be able to use it and, and turn around and make some changes uh, that, that benefit all of us. So thanks for watching. Happy collecting and see you next time.